Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah here from The Automator. And the other night I was talking to a friend of mine and I was asking him if he uses classes because we're getting ready to launch our, our course on classes. Mm -hmm. And then we started talking a bit more about functional versus object-oriented programming languages. And that was where I know uh, years ago I read something trying to explain it. And at the time I, I read it and I'm like, God, I still don't get it. So I, I just thought I'd ping Isaiah and see if he can kind of explain it a little clearer for me, because it, it just wasn't clear when I read before. Yeah, so th the, the names of them already suggest what they mean. Functional programming is uh, a type of a language or a method of programming that uses functions to do the steps, whatever you're performing. Every, every time you need to perform an action, you would use a function for it. But basically, functional programming is not the real term that you're looking for. You're probably looking for procedural programming. Mm. Cool. They are very so. So procedural programming is just when you have step by step approach to a problem to solve a problem. You have a procedure to solve a problem, and usually, most of the time, the steps to solve the problem are usually functions. That's what they are. So they are procedural programming. Procedural and functional programming are very closely related, okay? Now, the uh, object-oriented approach is not a step-by-step -step process. And that's the reason why it is usually so confusing because objects communicate to each other and sometimes the solution to the problem is not a step-by-step, -step, it's just that one object is performing an action and when it finishes kind of like notifies the other objects that it finished. And then the other objects kind of like react to that notification and perform their actions. You see, it, I'm let me, just, let me say yeah, this, uh, I don't think this is correct but I wanna make sure that it's not mm -hmm. correct. Okay. You're not trying to say, cause the other one that confuses me also is cause clearly there's functions in the object oriented coding, right? That, yes, that's sure. I'm really confused. sure. But what I was going to say was, you're not trying to say that um, functional programs are more linear and object-oriented ones aren't necessarily linear. Is that correct? No, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Right. Most of I the time. Saying, like, right, right, right. So that's exactly what I'm trying to explain. Okay. Most of the times when you're doing procedural programming and functional programming, not all the time, there are exceptions to this, of course. Okay, like sure. when you have like events or something like that, it actually, an event raises a function and it is not exactly linear, yeah, but yeah. most of the time, and, and this is the part of it, the structure of a program in functional programming or procedural programming usually follows a kind of like set of instructions that go in a specific way. Just start doing this, then do that, then do this, then do that. That's it, okay? If you think about a specific type of program that might do that, um, anytime that you have a program that goes ahead and reads a file, goes line by line, performs some actions, and then finishes, that is usually a very good example of functional programming or procedural programming, okay? Usually, you would have a function that does that, right? So that's the reason why. That's the reason why it's not always necessary to use objects, because there are some times that you don't need an object, right? So for this type of thing, like you're going to open a file, read it line by line, if the line contains this thing, do that thing, you're done. Why would I need an object for that? You see? Now, and here's the part that gets really annoying for people is in the old in the older times, like for example, C plus C, the, the language C did not have the concept of objects. We didn't have that concept at that time. So everything, uh, Visual Basic, for example, you had this line 10, you know, 10, 20, 30, and then you say, go to 20, and that's it. That's the only thing you had. You had a, you had a, a, a set of actions, and if you wanted to repeat something, you just went to the previous line, and that's it. Later on, with the introduction with C++ and Java and those uh, other languages, then the start of a, a, a different way of solving problems came along, which is object-oriented programming. Most of the languages today can handle both ways. That's the thing. You can, in our hotkey, for example, do a purely functional script. That's totally fine. You can. 
Well, and you can always, uh, for example, you can also create a purely object-oriented program as well. We can do both. There are some languages, I think, I'm not sure to which, to which extension C Sharp and Java do this, but you cannot program if you do not have an object. Yeah, isn't Python all objects? If I um, remember right? But that's not what I mean. So for example, in, in Java, the start of your program is a class and the class has a method called main and that's how it starts. In Python, you, you, you can start writing variables and that's it. That's, it's, it's very similar to AutoHotKey in that sense. But in Java, for you to even start, you have to create a class, the class name, and then there's a method that says main in it. That, so it is an object right from the get-go, right? But in general, as I just said, many of the most, uh, the, the most recent languaging, uh, languages allow you to, for both. It, it, they have flex, flexibility. You can do only functions. You can do only object-oriented. You can make, mix them up. So that is up to the developer to find the solution for the problem that he's doing in a way that makes sense to him. Sometimes objects make your code way too complex for what you really need. If it is just a set of steps, then go ahead and create well, a set of steps. That's all. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think even if, because I've seen it like with Maestrith, he, he'll create like his M class mm -hmm. instantiates initially with a function. So I don't even realize it's a class, right? I'm using exactly. it only as so even though you can have your code as a class, you can make mm -hmm. it where users don't have to understand. They don't even, code. yeah, exactly. They don't even know that it is a function, uh, that is a class. So no. in general, uh, that is mainly the difference between those two concepts. And But in general, it is just ways of solving problems. And with everything in life, there are many, many ways of doing that. So you just pick the one that you're more comfortable with. Well, and in... I guess when it boil, all boils down to it, it really doesn't matter, right? In the sense of, are you using a functional language or an ob, uh, you know object oriented language or whatever? It, it's you know like you said, you're using a language. Does it make sense to you? What can you do with it? And for the most part, there's so much overlap of what you can actually do with them. It just might be slightly different, structured differently, right? That it's it's not that crazy difference. And I think I think where so it these are the extremes, right? right of that, course, of course, of course. But but in the middle, what I would say is like. It usually depends on whether you're doing a program for yourself or if you're doing a project with a team, because there are certain aspects of just a line of code, like procedural code, that if you have a very big project working with a big team, solving an issue might become a little bit harder. No, right? And that's, yeah, I've watched the videos with uh, object oriented stuff and talking about. I don't think it wasn't inheritance. What was it? Was a polymorphic? No, it wasn't that one. I no, did. inheritance is the one. Inheritance, inheritance with, one. with grabbing a class and then just uh, creating a second class that derives from the first one. But no, it, it's that still wasn't the term either. It was the one where it basically compartmentalizes and protects that you don't encapsulation. Allow yeah, encapsulation. Yeah, yeah, that yeah that's yeah. the one. <laughs> and, and that is something you correct me if I'm wrong. You can't do that with just functional programming. Is that right? Um, well, let me see something. Uh, I, as I'm not really versed in other languages, I might go ahead and say, no, you can't because a function is a function. And right. whatever you reference, you, you put it on your code. If it is included in your code, you can use it anywhere. Um, right. In an object, though, you have the option of setting certain methods private or certain right. variables private or public and those kind of uh, in-between stuff that they can do. Uh, but with functions, you do not have that as far as i understand somebody might correct me on that but yeah. I'm not and really it sure. might be different in some languages depending yeah. on how they built right so yeah anyway yeah. awesome cool thanks man there you go